spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has more kinds of cars or more kinds of people. See them at the sign of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I've been doing YouTube, really, um, for about eight years now, and that's a long, long time, and it's kind of crazy. The things that I've seen in that eight years, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, let, let's be clear here. Eight years on YouTube, you're a dinosaur. I don't know what you want to call Cop Pizzle because he's been on here much, much longer than I have. So, um, yeah, call that whatever you may. Be that as it may, um, the funny thing about YouTube is the things that you think where you put your stamp on it, you think, this is it, man. This is going to be the shit that everybody's going to love and it's going to go viral. And you find out the shit that you think is the best stuff that you've ever done, nobody watches. It, 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 nobody watches. You know, one of the most popular videos that I have, it's well over 100,000 views, was literally a video that I did on my roof where I was showing that I was fixing a piece of rotted wood and putting some shingles on it. To this day, still gets about 500 views, 1,000 views a month on it. It's no rhyme or reason. I go to Drew Pearson's Hall of Fame after party and literally have all of the cowboy greats that are there from Roger Staubach to Bob Lilly to Tony Dorsett, you know, uh, Anthony Wright before, um, I mean, Rayfield Wright before he passed, you know, Michael Irvin's there, Charles Haley's. I mean, it's like everybody who's who and nobody watches. It, it just doesn't make any sense. And when I did that, um, Micah Parsons, Wild World of Sports, I did it for nostalgia because most of us old people know, uh, that, that, that know that whole jingle, you know, da, da, da. you know, you, you're used to seeing the ski jumper who literally, pff, you know, crashed and flopped up off of it. And it was cool this morning when I was looking up the soundtrack from it was getting the whole story about the skier. It turns out he wasn't a very good skier. And that crash made him famous. So he's like, yeah, I was never a great, you know, known for being a ski jumper. But thank you for ABC's Wild World of Sports because you made me famous because of that spill. So my point being here is in the time that I've been here on YouTube, we hear all different kinds of things. We get told this, that, and the other. And the funny thing is, is when we're told that Josh Rosen is the best, you know, NFL ready quarterback to go, that Dak Prescott, you know, he's a camp body that, um, you know, you, you hear all these different things and that, you know, the Cowboys should sign this player or they're stupid for letting that guy go. The reality of it is, is nobody really knows shit. Nobody really knows how things are going to work out. Because I want to play a, a clip here. Because, and, and this is what I brought up during our members-only call-in today. People are acting like 
what we're doing now is different than what we've done before, that this is a reset that, you know, I, I, I know my man Walker Wade said that Jeff Kofinoff said that this is a two year reset. Well, it, it is kind of a reset on the cap, but the Cowboys are still going to be winning. If you don't think that the Cowboys are going to win 10 games, then you don't really understand football too much. Yes, Washington will be better, but they were ass-ass. Yes, conceivably, the Eagles are better, but they lost six of their last seven games last year, and Jalen Hurts did not look like the quarterback he was the year before. So this is interesting to me because this was immediately after the 49er game, and I want you to listen where we were at that point. Let's go. I got Nothing but positivity here in my star ups, star downs. Oh, yeah? Yes, okay. You guys go. You guys go. All right, let's let Bobby vent, and yeah. then you give us all the star ups. I got them all. For the Cowboys. By the way, fan replay brought to you by Ciroc We, we had just lost. Uh, you want me to, to, to jump into star ups, star down, or would you like me to start with a statement instead? Statement. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, you, you've you got a decision to make. Like, you got to pick your, your scheme or your quarterback. Because the, the fact is, these two coupled together, it's not going to work. Quarterback in this scheme is not going to work. Now, I'm not t- I'm not telling you which one you have to pick. I, I have my own thoughts on it, but I'm just telling you, regardless, you got to pick one. You either need to commit to this scheme with a different quarterback or you need to move the scheme out of here because it's not, it will not work. This Why? offense can't – because I'm what you were seeing with Dak, Brad said it last night on the postgame show. This is not – even with all the interceptions in the past, this is a different quarterback right now than we've seen in the past. Like He's somebody – it's just it's it's not the same quarter. He's not comfortable running this offense. You can see it. He's he's timid. He is. I, I think what it is is Dak is playing at his best. Brian has always said Dak's at his best when he gets a little muddied, when he's kind of freelancing, when he feels the game, when he's taking some like that's when he plays his best. This entire system is about rigidity and here, 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 and precision. This step here and this step here and everything comes together and bl- and that's not. Dak's game. Like when we think about some of the big plays Dak's made in his career, it's not based on that. It's, oh, sliding to avoid a rush, step up, throw the ball, or oh, roll out, make something happen. And so I just think that the, it, this is again, the analogy I've made is they started to hydroplane last year with the interceptions and McCarthy slammed on the brakes instead of just letting his foot off the gas. If you let your foot off the gas, car settles back in the road. Instead, he slammed on the brakes and the offense is in a tailspin now. And it's something where you've got to correct it. You, you've got to adjust. This is not just as simple as like, well, we got to go out there and execute better. Nope. This is just, this is not something right now that I think definitely your quarterback's not comfortable with. I think there are people on offense outside of just the quarterback who clearly don't look comfortable within this scheme right now. I I, I don't hear a whole lot of lies. I, I think he's right. It's clear Dak is not comfortable in this. It's clear he may be he may be a bad fit for it. He also may be a bad fit as a quarterback in the NFL at this point. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding with you, Bobby. I'm Dak's kidding. Ass. Whoa. I'm kidding. He's still very good. This is not him. This is not a scheme for him. This is not the day also to back him. He was terrible yesterday. He He was was bad. He was a he was a he was a bottom half NFL quarterback yesterday. That might be kind. Second half especially. First half, I thought there were moments he he like I mean that drive where they scored the touchdown. I thought you saw he was gutsy. I thought you saw he stood in the the the, well the Cooks throw was first half. That was awful. That, 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 yeah. that was a shot. Yeah. That that's that that's the type now, of little things. What I, I heard you talking about on the way in. I didn't. I haven't gone back and seen a, like even a TV copy. Obviously. Yeah. So the TV screens in there were all in real time. Like they didn't have any delay like the other stadiums do. So I only saw that play once, yeah. and it was a little bit frantic. So I honestly can't tell you that may have been really bad. I just didn't. We were looking for a yeah. replay. Oh. They didn't throw it up on the screen. I have no idea how bad a look that was. So again. I, I just want to preface this by saying when you when you have these types of games against this type of opponent, we're gonna you get super hyper focused on one play and one mistake because as yeah. you said last week, that's what it was gonna take in order to pull up this type of win. What happened that I saw with the Cooks overthrow, he rolled left out of the pocket, nobody was near him, and he just threw the ball out of bounds. Obviously, Cooks got behind Warner. Uh, he got behind the safety uh-huh. as well. And that was just, you know, that's an opportunity you have to hit if you want to pull off that type of win yeah. on the road. And it was just a, it was just an awful, awful throw. Yeah, it wasn't uh, a good throw. It's it's like Ooh. it's like you felt like there was gonna be more pressure and he threw it left out of bounds. But look, that that was one play. I mean he he was he was bad all night. 
Uh, and look, the San Francisco defense is going to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They are. So is their offense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and their offense is going to make you. Uh All right. So at that moment last year, it was like, scrap everything. We're done. Dak isn't even an NFL quarterback. That, isn't that what they said? He's not even an NFL quarterback there. Mike McCarthy or your quarterback, one of them's got to go. The scheme is not going to work. Dak does not fit this thing. Mike McCarthy is an idiot and so on. And this goes back to my premise that nobody really knows shit. Because after that time, after that time, C.D. Lamb goes on a tear and ends up having the Dallas Cowboys single season record. Dak Prescott ends up being the second in MVP race. The Dallas Cowboys roll off a bunch of wins. And so for everybody that's out there, my, my point on this is not to kill 105.3 to fan. They do a good job of doing that themselves. They don't need me to try and disrespect them. You know, I'm just Joe the fan, you know, uh, a, a moron in his mama's basement. Actually, I'm upstairs in the red brick house, Just, I guess in an old ass house, because it is like 204 years old. Um, but the reality is, is nobody really knows what's going to happen. You can speculate, you can try and figure, you can look at the stats and the numbers and everything else, but nobody really knows. And anybody that tells you that they do is lying to them, do you? They're just lying. Nobody knows. The Dallas Cowboys could end up catching lightning in a bottle next year. Maybe the draft class that everybody's killing from the year before. Maybe Mozzie going back to his original position and putting weight back on becomes better than Hankins. Maybe Sam Williams steps up better than um, Dorrance Armstrong. Maybe Diggs coming back is 100% healthy and takes off where he left off. Maybe Cooper Beebe and Tyler Guyton are out the box and the Cowboys' offensive line is a lot better. Maybe Brandon Cooks, now another year into the system with Dak Prescott, and in fact the whole offense with Mike McCarthy calling plays, is better. Because you know the thing that's funny, because I, I, I joke with Eagle fans all the time. Okay, I joke with them all the time. And it's funny because things that happen with the Cowboys are looked at differently. I was talking about how Justin Herbert with Kellen Moore, his numbers regressed. Some of them were the worst, you know, completion percentage, yards per play of his career. And immediately somebody said, oh, but he was injured last year. And I was kind of like, you can't have it both ways because the year before when Dak was throwing all the interceptions, his thumb might have had a little bit to do with that. When you break your thumb, because it, what you have to understand is, for those out there that don't know, your thumb is what separates us from the apes. Without your thumb, you can't throw a football. But what I was pointing out to the Eagles fans and people was with Kellen Moore going to the Chargers, some of it is it's a new system that slows you down. The more time you're in a same system, the more comfortable you can get and everybody gets the same page. And so now the Cowboys going to the second year of the Texas Coast offense should be able to be better than they started out last year. Whereas the Eagles... Now with Kellen Moore, who took Justin Herbert, and you saw him take a step back, and they were like, we're good, we don't need you. Going to the Eagles with Jalen Hurts, who's now going to be in his third system in three years, may have a big step backwards. I'm just saying. So in the end, all the talk is great to talk about, but nobody really knows what's going to happen. Are any good people? <clears throat> As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I'm going to go spend some more time with my beautiful bride over there. 
Hmm? Clearly she just walked out. She did just walk out looking as beautiful as she wants to be. Yeah, I'm going to go take me a shower and go chill out on the couch. I appreciate you guys as well as you ladies. And I hope you guys have had a great weekend. And I'll see you soon. Peace.